1962, Stan Lee had a faint idea for a new superhero, but it was the genius of Steve Ditko that created the most iconic character of the last half century. Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. Today we're talking about my favorite comic artist on his most famous creation, Sturdy Steve Ditko and Spider-Man. We will see how Ditko's style with Spidey evolved over his run and take a look at some incredible action figures based on his art, as well as looking at some of the incredible Ditko-inspired action figures that are in the works. Now before we get into this, Stan Lee has repeatedly taken full credit for creating Spider-Man. In a 2007 BBC interview with Jonathan Ross, he reluctantly concedes to Ditko as a co-creator and then immediately takes it back. But do you yourself believe that he co-created it? I'm willing to say so. That's not what I'm asking you, Stan. No, and that's the best answer I can give you. So it's a no then, really? Pardon me? So it's a no then. No, I really think the guy who dreams the thing up created it. You dream it up and then you give it to anybody to draw it. I mean, Anybody? You can just give it to anybody to draw? Ditko drew his rebuttal in 1999, showing that while Stan had an idea for a character, the look, personality, gear, and costume all came from Ditko. The two even addressed some of the conflict in a three-page spread in the very first Amazing Spider-Man annual titled... How Stan and Steve Create Spider-Man. It started as a tongue-in-cheek look behind the scenes, but the stress between the creators was already apparent, with Ditko moaning, What do you mean, we? I do all the drawing while you practice signing your name, then commenting that all the web lines he has drawn still wouldn't fit around Lee's swelled head. Look, I am always going to be Team Ditko on this one, but it's undeniable that the creators had an unmatched synergy together. That said, Ditko immediately became the main creative force as he was plotting, penciling, and inking the books, with Lee adding dialogue to the finished product. When Stan complained to Ditko that there was too much Peter Parker and not enough Spider-Man, Ditko created one of his signature looks, the half-Peter, half-Spidey. It would quickly become an iconic design, a definitive style for Ditko's web-slinger which would be perfectly captured in this 2001 Wizard World exclusive mini-bust. Sculpted by Randy Bowen, the statue was limited to 6,000 pieces and brilliantly encapsulates the look and feel of those early Spider-Man issues. But before we dig into the awesome action figures, let's take a look at some of the coolest Ditko-inspired items in my collection. Modeled after the 1930s Sirocco figurines, like these seen here from famous news strip characters. Dark Horse produced a line of wood-like resin statues of classic Marvel characters beginning in 2011. And of course, the first in the series was Spider-Man. Limited to just 2,000 copies, mine was actually number 62, Spidey was a perfect replica of Ditko's artwork. From the web wings under his arms to the distinctive way Ditko drew the spider emblems on the wall crawler's chest and back. They were designed specifically to look old-fashioned. From the rough-hewn texture to the visible seam lines and the other distressed aspects, such as the method of paint application. To complete the vintage look, the figures were packaged in a tin box, decorated with original comic artwork including cross-sells of upcoming figures. Inside the lid, there's a brief bio on the character and a vintage style pen, again with artwork straight from the master. For the 2012 San Diego Comic Con, Dark Horse created an exclusive figure depicting Ditko's famous Half Peter, Half Spider. This one was limited to only a thousand pieces, and I scored number 519. The figure was based on the pinup from the first Amazing Spider Man annual showing Ditko's signature style come to life. Just like the previous version, it was presented in a vintage tin with even more dynamic Ditko artwork. And once again, there was an info card and vintage pin on the inside lid. That same year for the New York Comic Con, Dark Horse gave us a version with Spidey pulling up his costume to reveal his hidden spider signal and the belt where he stashes his web fluid and his camera for taking pics of himself to sell to the Daily Bugle. 
I got number 237 out of a thousand. This was again clearly influenced by specific panels of Ditko art. It came in another fabulous 10, this time with some of Ditko's best Spidey action shots. And again, it had the bio and another vintage pen. As great as those are, let's dig into more daring Ditko designs, beginning with the Spider-Man Classics figure from 2001. I have actually kept a copy of this Spider-Man Classics Series 2 first appearance Spider-Man in its gorgeous clamshell case for over 20 years now. And you can see it is still just absolutely perfect right there in the package. Of course, this displays so well. You've got the complete comic book in the back. There's this incredible display stand, which is like a billboard with J. Jonah Jameson on it. And of course, the figure. Now, the back has cross-sell for the other figures that were in this line, as well as a bio. Just really, this is what Marvel Legends moved to as far as their packaging, and it really displays the figure so well. But let's take a look at the actual figure itself. So here he is in all of his glory. And as you can see, they used the body mold for the first Spider-Man Classics figure for this figure. Now, I think that works really well. This is a, a very petite kind of thin muscular frame for Spidey, and I think that works with the early Ditko issues as we've seen earlier in the video. He's also red and black, just like Spider-Man appeared in the very first issue that he appeared in, Amazing Fantasy 15, but because they didn't change the sculpt, he still has a much more modern spider emblem on his chest and the more modern spider emblem on his back. They changed the head sculpt and tried to give him more Ditko looking eye pieces. But remember, that cover for Amazing Fantasy 15 was actually drawn by Jack Kirby. It was inked by Ditko, and so it certainly had strong Ditko influences, but the actual art was Kirby. Now, this figure is just really kind of the, the gold standard of the day. You've got over 30 points of articulation. He has incredible bend at all of these joints. He can get into such great Spider-Man poses. They went all out with the articulated fingers where he can have all the way out or bring them back into a thwip position on both hands. Good movement at the head. He's got a ball jointed diaphragm and they had these kind of unfortunate bicep cuts. They were still trying to figure out how to balance articulation with sculpt. And this is something that we'll see that changes as this figure carries on. But one thing you may notice is I just was never fully satisfied with these eyes. Even back 20 years ago, I tried to take like a Sharpie and make them less Kirby, more Ditko. And truthfully, as much as I love this figure, I've just never been fully satisfied with it. In fact, the one that I have on display down in my secret lounge, I didn't mess with the eyes, but I took some old pantyhose and cut them out and created the web wings. I just simply glued them into the sides and for a display piece, as he sits there on display, it actually works pretty well. Uh, they've got that cloth material. They're not fully see-through, but they still look pretty good. But even with this, I wasn't satisfied with this figure because Spidey really only appeared in the red and black in Amazing Fantasy 15. Come the first issue of Amazing Spider-Man, he was in his more classic red and blues. So I took the head off of one of those first appearance figures and put it on a red and blue Spidey suit to try to get a figure that's even closer to the Ditko version. Now, one thing that you'll notice is this is a slightly later sculpt of this Spidey Classics figure. And the difference is they've taken out that crazy bicep swivel and he it doesn't mess up the sculpted lines of his upper arms. But another cool thing about this figure is look at the level of detail here at his hands. They actually went in and painted the silver of the release nozzle of his web shooters 
and the palm pad. And they did that on both hands. You can see clearly right here where that silver paint shows his web shooters in the palm of his hand and the nozzle where it comes out. That is the kind of care and level of detail that Toy Biz put into these early Spider-Man classics figures. Toy Biz's second attempt at a first appearance Spider-Man figure was an upgrade in every way. We're blessed with a brand new sculpt, still with that lean, athletic, gymnast sort of look to Spider-Man that was very indicative of kind of the earliest days of Steve Ditko's run on the title. It's maybe a little bit more muscular and carved, kind of a almost McFarlane sort of body frame that we see here, but still very much reminiscent of the earliest Ditko days. But where they really crushed it are with the new parts that they featured on this figure, including a brand new head sculpt that is a spot-on replica of Amazing Fantasy 15's cover. Those eyelets really do look exactly like Spidey's eyelets looked on the cover of that book. But where they really made a big improvement was on this torso. By creating that classic Ditko Spider-Man emblem on the front as well as on the back. Now you can see this is one that didn't last very long. And as a matter of fact, Ditko changed this during the course of his run, getting rid of that little knob of a Spider-Man head that you see right there. But this is the exact emblem that appeared on Spidey's back for Amazing Fantasy 15. Now, this is a terrific figure. I really love the texture. You can see where the lines are carved into the legs to give the appearance of that cloth costume. This figure did come with a mesh web wing that attached to his back. It actually attached like at his wrist and his neck, and it always looked terrible. It covered up the beautiful sculpt of this back emblem, and it just really didn't take with the figure. So I took it off immediately. They did go all out toy biz on these hands where each of the four fingers is individually articulated. So you can get it into something that kind of resembles a fist, but you certainly can still get that classic thwip hand with those four articulated fingers. And that's on both hands. But they weren't satisfied with this. There actually was another version of this figure that came out. As a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, they released a Stan Lee figure. And we've gotten a newer Stan Lee figure, but this was the very first one that we got. And he has soft, good clothing that you can see right here. But if you look closely at Stan's neck, I think I see some web lines there. That's right. This Stan figure actually came with some interchangeable parts where you could switch him out and turn him into Spider-Man. Now, would I have preferred a Steve Ditko figure that you could turn into Spider-Man? Absolutely. But I'll take what we can get. And the end result was a fairly accurate Ditko figure. Here is the Stan Lee version in red and blue, which is what Spidey appeared in for the entire rest of Ditko's run, still has that great Ditko Spider Emblem on the front, has that Amazing Fantasy 15 head sculpt here. This one still has the web lines, and you can see kind of how just generally terrible they are. You know, they have these kind of twisty, bungee sort of ties here. Again, it totally covers up the beauty of that back Spider Emblem, and, I mean, it doesn't work. It sort of looks more like a cape, than it does anything else, but it is an opportunity to actually get this figure sculpted in the more classic red and blue of Spider-Man. Hey, and let's not forget our friends at Art Asylum who know how to take cute to a whole nother level and are able to pack in all of the detail that we've seen in these Marvel Legends figures into a two-inch package with their version of Amazing Fantasy 15 first appearance Spider-Man. Again, you've got that classic Kirby slash Ditko head sculpt with eyes that you absolutely know came right from that. They've got the Ditko Spidey on the chest. Of course, you have the black, but they do a nice job of using the blue highlights to kind of bring out the musculature that really sort of bridges the gap between Spidey's first and second appearance. And they go all the way with maybe the most accurate 
Ditko spider here on the back. But one of the things that I think is so awesome is all mini mates have these square heads. They're like little, you know, cylinders. And when you've got a design that is a round pattern, how do you make that work? Well, look at what they've accomplished here where the web lines actually come together in the back and then streak right down the back. It's just the little touches that mini mates have that make them such unbelievable figures. And you still get all of this incredible articulation in a tiny little package. So cheers to you, mini mates. You made a fantastic, amazing Fantasy 15 figure. So because the air quote Ditko figures of Spider-Man that we have gotten thus far have still had too much Jack Kirby influence for my liking. They've only been based off of that cover of Amazing Fantasy 15. I've always had to look elsewhere to see if I could find a figure that really captured the look and feel of Steve Ditko. And I believe I found it in the most unusual pit place inside a McDonald's Happy Meal. That's right, this Spider-Man came out in 1995 as a part of the Spider-Man animated series line, and it came as a Happy Meal toy. Now, he's a little bit kind of deformed, he's a little bit squat, but I actually think that makes him look even more Ditko. As we see with some of the later Ditko art, his Spider-Man figure became more muscular, more compact, but instead of having all of that deeply drawn in musculature. He he looked more like a young fit man in a costume. And that's what I think this figure really captures. The muscles are there, but there's not all of those sinewy lines drawn in to really make it look like, you know, like a 90s comic. But where I think this little tiny Happy Meal toy crushes it is with that face sculpt. There is something so Ditko about that mask I just love it. Now, it's not a completely perfect Ditko, and it wasn't really meant to be, but I love this thing so much, I included it in my top 10 Spider-Man action figures of all time. And you can actually see that list. I've got a link to it in the description below. Our next almost Ditko figure is the renowned retro card back Spidey. Now, of course, this is on the cards for the 1995 animated series Spider-Man, and it even has artwork that really is reminiscent of the animated cartoon. And when you look at the figure that's here in the package, he has the very, very thin black outline of the eyelets, which is really what Spidey looked like in the 90s cartoon. So I think that this base figure that is in this package is really meant to be more indicative of the cartoon Spider-Man but we get an extra head. And when you look here on the back, that clearly looks like 90s animated Spider-Man, but that head, that head is a Ditko head. And I know a lot of people refer to this as a John Romita version of Spider-Man, and I won't argue that. Certainly the way that the body shape and kind of how almost sort of beefy muscular is very reminiscent of John Romita's version of the Web Slinger. I will not deny that. But when I get this figure out and really start to play with it, and you look at it from some of the different angles, man, that gets more and more Ditko every time I look at it. As a matter of fact, when I went through and I did my series on Spider-Man's history, where I looked at all of the different Marvel Legends figures ever produced of the Web Slinger, and I included some of the custom Ditko villains that I've had made over the years. I used this figure with this head sculpt to fill in for Ditko Spider-Man as I posed them and tried to recreate some of the iconic scenes from the comics. And I gotta tell you, it worked perfectly. This figure fits in exactly like a Ditko Spider-Man. Now, plus, you can't deny the fact that it has some of the absolute greatest articulation that we have gotten in a Marvel Legends figure, Spider-Man or otherwise. It is just utterly terrific. I love it. Now, for those of you who say, nope, this is clearly a Romita version because look, it has a much more Romita spider here. It has a much more Romita spider here. I agree with you. Th those definitely are far more consistent with John Romita's version. But that head sculpt, the thickness 
of the black around the eyes, particularly the fact that it's a little bit thicker on the top compared to the bottom. When you look at it like that, it's hard to tell me that's not meant to be a Ditko Spidey head. And I know we have some new Spider-Man figures coming, particularly some some uh, new red and blue Spidey figures coming. And it'll be great to see how well this head fits on the new pinless body where we don't have those red joints popping up right there. But if you're looking for what is arguably the best mass market Spidey figure to date, here it is. But as great as these figures are, the future is even brighter for us Ditko devotees. For Spidey's 60th anniversary, the Hasbro Marvel Legends team debuted a completely new Amazing Fantasy 15 figure. And while this is the red and black design from the Web Spinner's first appearance, they went with a head that more accurately portrays Ditko's designs, not just those Kirby eyes from the cover of AF-15. Along with a muscular, but not too muscular frame that is slightly shorter than previous Spidey figures, indicating his teenage status during the time of Ditko's run, this figure also features that distinctive spider emblem. Spidey comes with everything you could want, from a couple of web effects to four sets of hands, including fist, grabbers, thwippy hands, and the essential, and missing from retro Spidey, wall crawling hands. But I think I'm most excited about the web wing effects. Hasbro has included two pair of fully sculpted and removable versions of Ditko's underarm webbing. One that works with his arm extended, and a second set that functions with his arms at his side. It's an elegant design choice, and I can't wait to get my hands on this. But just wait, because there's even more Ditko goodness to come. Mezco Toys, as part of their 112 line of high-end, 6-inch cloth costume action figures, has released promo pictures of their latest Spider-Man figure, and they have gone full Ditko. The figure comes with multiple heads, including two modern heads. The deluxe version even has one with light-up eyes. But everything else screams Ditko Spidey. From Peter Parker with glasses, to the half-masked face, to the wide-ranging accessories. All of their promo shots of the figure are lifted straight from original panels of Ditko art. They've even used the famous scene where Doc Ock unmasks Spidey to tease a potential Ock figure in this promo. Another shot, which teases a potential Green Goblin figure in the 112 line, is a direct replica of the cover of issue 23. They even managed to get this figure into the exact pose that Spidey has on the cover of issue 19 of Amazing Spider-Man. If you're like me and you can't get enough of Ditko Spider-Man, check out this video where I go through every figure of Spidey's friends and foes, starting with the Ditko run. And if you want to see what I consider the 10 best Spider-Man figures ever, then this is the video for you. And for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.